Hi, I'm Mike Maroney, one of the product managers here at Applied Motion Products, and I'd like to welcome you to our virtual trade show booth here at Pack Expo Connects 2020. While we had hoped to be seeing you in person in Chicago this week, we're happy you're here joining us virtually. Just a few housekeeping reminders before we get started. We've got some folks monitoring the live chat during the demo, and they'll be responding to any questions you have throughout the session. And I'll try to leave a few minutes for Q&A at the end. And then finally, we're keeping the demo room here staffed during show hours. So in addition to the chat feature in our virtual booth, we can spin up a quick Zoom call and walk you through any of these demos one-on-one -on -one if you're interested. I want to talk today about our true count absolute encoder. Absolute encoders as a category are encoders that can resolve their position even after the motor and the drive they're, they're connected to are powered off. This is compared to an incremental encoder, which can only track motion as a delta step from its previous position. In other words, an incremental encoder can tell the drive, hey, I've moved 100 steps since last time you asked me, but has no idea what that means. And it relies on the drive it's connected to to keep track of the real position. An absolute encoder, on the other hand, knows that it's currently 100 steps away from its predefined home location, and it can communicate that back to the drive. The TrueCan absolute encoder is a high resolution encoder able to resolve 20,000 unique positions within 365 degrees. It can also track 65,000 revolutions of the motor, what, it call, what we call the turns counter. It uses a magnetic sensing element to keep track of the single turn position, and it uses the turns counter to track the number of revolutions, clockwise or counterclockwise, from the, home position, from the home position. The turns counter operates without a battery backup or a mechanical gear, and this means there's no preventative maintenance or mechanical wear to worry about. The drive can be powered off for 20 seconds or for 20 years, and when it wakes up again, it knows exactly where it is, even if the shaft has moved while the drive was powered off. So right over here, I have a TXM24 step server motor with a true kind of absolute encoder inside of it. And right over here, I have a TXM24 step server motor with a standard incremental encoder inside of it. And as you can see, these two are nearly identical. The only difference is this absolute encoder version is a few millimeters longer because the encoder itself inside of the motor is a little bit longer. It's probably worth taking a minute to talk about that phrase I just mentioned, step servo. Um, our step servo product lines start with a standard step motor. We add a high resolution encoder, and then we feed that encoder information back into a classic servo control loop inside of the drive. And that allows us to treat this step motor as if it were a servo motor which enables things like smoother motion, boost torque, quieter operation, position maintenance, etc. It's not really the topic of today's demo, but if you're interested, we have a white paper over at appliedmotion.com you can download and read through. Okay, so we have these two step servo motors here, one with absolute encoder, one with the incremental encoder. Um, and they're really, they're really pretty similar mechanically, but once we get under the hood, the differences really start to pop up. So one of the major areas where you want to minimize wasted time is in machine startup. From the moment you turn on the machine or your device or your line or whatever, until the moment product starts flowing, you're wasting time. All your operators are in place, your material is waiting to flow, and the last thing you want to do is wait for a bunch of axes to have to home themselves before you can start processing your widgets. So what's our part in that? The true count encoder eliminates homing from your machine startup process completely. The encoder, remember, can keep track of its position relative to a predefined home location across tens of thousands of revolutions of the motor, which moves your homing um, into the machine commissioning as a one-time step instead of into the machine startup as an every-time step. So one example of this is in human-operated bagging machines. And for safety reasons, these machines are powered down frequently while operators replace bag stock. So when they're powered on again, the machines must be ready for use as quickly as possible. Long delays due to homing routine on each of the machine's various axes just are not acceptable. True count encoders allow the machine to power on and begin operation again very quickly, which um, enables the handling of the high volume of products moving through places like human touch points at fulfillment centers. Now, I have my favorite demo over here, but I'm saving that one for last. I want to talk about the basics first. A really common entry point for integrated motors as, as, is as a pneumatic cylinder replacement. And generally, these look something like this. They have an extended position and a retracted position. And instead of this motor mounted here, they just have a port for air pneumatic fluid. What I have here is a rod style actuator. And as you can probably tell by looking at it, it's designed to be a pneumatic cylinder replacement. The difference here is that because we have the step servo motor attached to it, we now have access to an infinite number of positions along this actuator and not just the extended and the retracted position. And further, because this particular step servo has the true kind encoder inside of it, 
we're able to plug the thing in and have it start moving between a bunch of predefined positions almost immediately. So when I plug it in, notice that there's no homing routine. It just starts moving. And then when I unplug the thing and plug it back in again, again, it'll start its positioning moves right away. No need to home. So that program that was running was written in, written in our Q programming language. It's only about 10 or 15 lines of code that are stored inside the drive. And in your applications, you can distribute the intelligence in your system between the drive and some PLC that's off in a panel somewhere. And again, that's not really today's topic, but Q programming is something that our apps team can help you out with. And if you're really interested in industrial networking and running our drives on industrial Ethernet networks, uh, we have a demo on Thursday on that topic that I would encourage you to sign up for. Okay, so let's talk about how I commissioned this system. When I first mounted the motor to the actuator, I jogged the motor until the actuator was in a safe but not fully retracted position and called that the home position. I then jogged it a little bit more in and called that the counterclockwise limit and jogged it all the way out and called that the counterclockwise limit. And then I burned all three of those absolute positions, home, clockwise, counterclockwise limits, into the drive's non-volatile memory. And with that commissioning completed, I can now safely program this actuator and test out any moves I want. And I can be confident that not only will the home position always be remembered, but that even an untrained operator programmer is not able to run this actuator out to mechanical failure the drive is gonna monitor the position and stop it when it hits those soft limits. Now this is classically done with physical limit switches, either wired back to the drive itself or to that PLC off in the cabinet. But here we're able to eliminate that additional hardware and the maintenance and the risk that it inherently brings with it. So as promised, here's my favorite demo. As it's running right now, you can imagine that these are setup axes on a conveyor system. We have a TSM-17X step servo integrated motor with a five to one gearhead running the conveyor belt itself. We have a TXM-34 step servo integrated motor with an incremental encoder running this back axis. We've got a TXM-34 integrated motor with an absolute encoder, the true kind of absolute encoder running on this front axis. And both are running Q programs cycling between a few different positions um, as positioning moves. And of course, in the real world, you're not going to be moving these setup axes this fast, but you know, bear with me here. Maybe we call this, um, you know, these are diverter axes and there's an optical system directing the traffic on the belt somewhere upstream. Anyway, the point is we have two motors here doing their thing and they're doing the same thing. Now, imagine what happens when there's a problem. Let's say the first problem that comes up, there's a jam on the conveyor belt. I have to stop the drives and clear them off of the belt. And I can clear whatever's going on and when I restart the drives, because I use the, the drives to clear the belt, the power is still on in the drive. So the position information is retained. And so when I start the motion again, these are both gonna start doing their positioning moves just like they were before. Okay, let's, uh, let's say something else happens. There's a clear, but for whatever reason, I can't use the drives to clear it. I have to physically disable the drives. Again, they're powered on, but the servo control loops are off. And that allows me to use these manual knobs to move the diverters out of position, clear whatever's going on, whatever the obstruction is on the belt. And then when I restart the motion, everything is just fine. Because again, the drives never lost power, so the drives never lost positional information. But now let's say something worse happens. Let's say the operator, for whatever reason, hits the e-stop. So when we hit the e-stop, the power gets cut to both of these drives, the conveyor, everything is offline. And then when I restart, after the issue has been dealt with, you can see this absolute encoder motor goes right back into its positioning routine as if nothing ever happened because it knows right where it was. Even though the drive was powered off while the um, obstruction was cleared, the drive didn't lose position information. This incremental encoder in the back, this is having to rehome. It's having to run back all the way out to that hard stop, hit the hard stop to figure out where it is, do an offset move off the hard stop, and now it knows where it is, it can continue its positioning moves. Let's do one more test before we wrap up here. Again, I'm gonna hit the e-stop, and I'm gonna physically move this absolute encoder motor. I'm gonna physically move this incremental encoder motor. And what's gonna happen when I start up? 
even though the power is off when this motor moved, it still knows right where it is. It can still go right back into its positioning routine. This incremental motor in the back, it's got a home again. It doesn't care that it moved while the power is off, but it, because it doesn't know where it is anyway. So as soon as it wakes up, every time it wakes up, it's got to do that homing move again. So we're going to run out. We're going to hit the hard stop. We're going to back up. And all this time here that we're wasting in that homing, that right there is the key benefit I want you to come away with. No matter how you handle axis setup, e-stops, manual motion, line changeovers, et cetera, the true count encoder has you covered. We can handle any motion in the system, whether or not the drive is powered up, and still maintain positional accuracy. And therefore, we can eliminate the need to home any time after machine commissioning. This increases your uptime, and therefore, it increases your efficiency and your throughput. Do we have any quick questions I can answer before we wrap up? Hi, Mike, and hi, everyone. This is Eric. I'm here to help Mike with questions. Uh, Mike, there were a few questions that came in. Uh, sure. The first one has to do with um, battery backup. Does the encoder have a battery backup? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, if you're familiar with absolute encoders, there's a lot of different ways you can, you can implement this technology. Um, some of them have battery backups, and then you got to replace the battery on some frequency. Some of them have mechanical gears, so then you need to think about mechanical wear. Uh, the TrueCut Absolute Encoder has neither of those. So, right, there's no battery backup. There's no mechanical gears. It's entirely self-contained. And like I said before, it, um, you know, there's no battery to run out, so it can be off for 20 years and still maintain its position. So, no, the TrueCut Encoder does not have a battery backup. All right, great. Um, next question. What sizes of motors, uh, integrated motors, are available with the true count encoder? Yeah, good question. So the first one we looked at here, this is a, this is a NEMA 24. This is our TXM 24 series. Um, has these IP65 connectors. We also have a NEMA 23, the TSM 23 series, and that has standard RJ45 connectors and pluggable connectors instead of these M12s. Um, and then on the larger motors, the 34 frame motor, the TXM 34, we have a few of these around for prototypes. If you have an application, you know, talk to us. But generally speaking, these will be on the shelves and stocked in Q1. Great. Uh, and then I think we have time for one more question. Uh, do the absolute encoder uh, integrated motors support Ethernet IP and add-on instructions? Yeah, yeah, they do. So this network here is running Modbus TCP, and that's really only because this HMI natively supports Modbus TCP. If we were to rip this out and throw on a Compact Logics, we could do the same demo uh, with Ethernet IP instead of Modbus TCP. So our products with industrial Ethernet um, can support a variety of protocols, right? So no problem at all using Ethernet IP and our add-on instructions, like you mentioned, they're available on our website. These drives work just fine with them. If you want more information on that subject, we'll be doing a whole demo on industrial Ethernet, including Ethernet IP, including our add-on instructions uh, on Thursday. Okay, thanks, Mike. And I think that's about all we have time for now. Any questions that didn't get answered live, we'll be sure to follow up with afterwards. So thanks, Mike. Okay, thanks for attending our demo today. We'll be here in the virtual booth all week. We have that other demo coming up on Thursday on Industrial Ethernet. You can register for on our show page. Um, and as a reminder, we're keeping this physical space open all week. So if you'd like to check out any of these demos one-on-one, -on -one, you know, either, you know, any of the ones here, we've got other demos lining the walls for other applications. Um, just drop us a chat in the virtual showroom and we can spin up a quick Zoom. All right, have a great show. Thanks for your time.